Hi everyone, myself Jayshri R. Nair and I belong to the Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering of Rajagiri School of Engineering and Technology. I will be taking the fourth module on EE216 Electrical and Engineering for Applied Electronics and Instrumentation. My topic is on three phase induction motor. I will be dealing with the introduction, construction as well as the applications of three phase induction motor. Now as you all know, three phase induction motors are commonly known as asynchronous machines as it runs with a speed not equal to synchronous speed where synchronous speed is the speed of the rotating magnetic field. Now based on the supply we are having two types single phase induction motor and three phase induction motor. Single phase induction motor the basic qualities are it is inherently not self starting it is basically used for small power ratings and coming on to three phase induction motor it is inherent the main advantage is that it is inherently self starting ext hence extensively used in industries known as the workhorse of modern industry. Induction motors are available in fractional horsepower to megawatts level. Now following are the advantages of three phase induction motor simple design and rugged construction it can be used for any harsh environment reliable operation low initial cost minimum maintenance high efficiency efficiency of the order of 85 percent good power factor of the order of 0.85 lakh simple starting arrangement in order to reduce the heavy inrush of current during starting and acceleration it has got good speed regulation and reasonable overload capacity it is considered as almost a constant speed motor as evident from the speed output characteristics now following are the disadvantages low starting torque Speed decreases with increasing load and it requires auxiliary devices needed for speed control. Now moving on to construction details, like any rotating machine it needs a stator as well as a rotor and between the stator and the rotor you are having an air gap separation and the air gap has to be kept as minimum as possible of 1 mm to 3 mm and depending upon the type of rotor you are having two types one is a squirrel cage induction motor uh, commonly known as SEIM and second is a slippering induction motor commonly known as SRIM. Now moving on to the stator construction the main parts definitely you have a frame followed by the stator core three phase stator winding you have a terminal box two end covers bearings as well as brush gear which is applicable only for slip ring induction motor will be seen one by one frame it acts as an outer covering as you can see in the diagram it provides support and acts as a protective cover it is as you can see in the diagram it is cylindrical in shape fins are provided to increase the heat dissipation without increasing the diameter and you can see the terminal box also so this represents the stator with the frame stator core three phase winding as well as the terminal box now the stator core the main function of the stator is to provide the working flux and the working flux is provided by the three phase winding and the three phase winding is accommodated in the stator core it is cylindrical in shape it is accommodated within the frame slots are cut in the inner periphery to accommodate the three phase winding semi closed slots are cut in the inner periphery to accommodate the three phase winding now made up of next is a three phase winding it is made up of enameled copper windings definitely say three phase machine and windings of the three phases should be identical the three coils forms the three phase winding distributed in several slots now, now the coils belonging to each phase are to be connected in series and finally you will be having one starting end and one finishing end for each phase and the windings can be being a three phase the windings can be interconnected either in star or in delta most probably it is connected in delta fashion. Now coming to a terminal box the state of windings are terminated in the terminal box suppose it is a squirrel cage induction motor six terminals will be available like a1 a2 b1 b2 and c1 c2 and suppose it is a slip ring induction motor three for the stator and three for the rotor now the two end covers and bearings that's a part of the stator provide support for the rotor small capacity machine the driving end is of roller bearings and the non-driving end the ball bearings and for large capacity machine both sides provided with journal bearings and your brush gear is applicable only for sl slippering induction motor fitted with one of the end covers which is nearer to the slippering side. So those are the parts of the stator. Now moving on to rotor 
the main parts definitely you need is shaft the rotor is also cylindrical in shape you are having a rotor core which is cylindrical in shape slots are cut in the outer periphery to accommodate the rotor bars if it is a squirrel cage and windings in the case of slip ring induction motor and slip rings which is applicable only for slip ring induction motor now the two basic de designs are available depending upon the type of rotor design squirrel cage rotor and the slip ring rotor now moving on to slip squirrel cage rotor commonly known as the cage rotor rotor is cylindrical in shape and it is a laminated one why lamination because the rotor is subjected to reversals of magnetism so it is laminated one and the laminations will be of the thickness of 0.5 mm slots are cut in the outer periphery in order to accommodate the rotor bars if it is squirrel cage and it is either made up of bare copper or aluminum ends are short circuited with end rings the rotor circuit is a permanently closed one now conductors and the end rings looks like the cage of a squirrel and hence the name squirrel cage rotor and the most important advantage is that it is adaptable to any number of poles you can see the diagram the rotor bars with end rings and it is similar to the cage of a squirrel and hence it is known as the squirrel cage rotor and here you can see the diagram you can see the shaft rotor core rotor bars and the short circuited end rings now screwing of the rotor cores is done for the following purpose to reduce the magnetic locking to reduce the magnetic harm and it provides a uniform torque you can see the diagram the slots are cut not parallel to the shaft but at an inclined angle of 15 degree now slip ring rotor second type commonly known as the face wound rotor or the wound rotor why it is called wound rotor because it is having a winding very similar to that of the stator winding and you can see that it is cylindrical in shape definitely you have a shaft and the core the slots are cut in the outer periphery in order to accommodate the three phase winding and the windings are terminated to three slip rings definitely insulated you can see the three slip rings and the the nature of winding is a three phase balance winding very similar to that of the stator and the three phase winding is exactly similar to that of the stator but one difference is that here the windings are connected in star but in the stator it is connected in delta normally the connections are star connected and it is terminated to the three slip rings slip rings are made up of brass or phosphor bronze rotor the number of rotor slots should never be equal to the stator slots and here the rotor circuit is accessible that's the main difference and you can see the diagram over here the stator connected in delta the rotor connected in star the rotor terminals terminated to three slip rings with brushes resting on them on one side you can see the rotor connection and on the other side you can see the three phase star connected starting resistor now a brush holding mechanism is fitted onto the end cover it has two position the start position as well as the run position start position the brushes come in contact with the slip rings and the three phase variable resistance gets added to the rotor circuit and the run position causes the slip rings to be short circuited by means of a collar brushes also gets lifted to reduce the wear and figure shows the schematic representation of a simple slip ring induction motor now what are the need for the external resistors that increases the starting torque decreases the starting current and to obtain speed control now we'll see the application side squirrel cage induction motor employed when starting torque required is low speed control is not required slip ring induction motors are employed when starting torque required is high speed control is required and following are the applications used in centrifugal pumps fans conveyors com compressors reciprocating pumps lathe works and line shafting etc etc and slip ring induction motor extensively used in lifts conveyors hoists cranes pumps flour mills crushers printing presses punch presses etc now the applications based on application you can classify for blowers we go for high speed squirrel cage induction motor centrifugal pumps and fans you generally go for the squirrel cage induction motor reciprocating pumps rotary compressors reciprocating compressors we can go either for the squirrel cage or slip ring lifts cranes hoists generally we go for the slip ring but squirrel cage rotor can motor can also be used flour mills rubber mills crushers punch presses high torque squirrel cage or either you can go for the slip ring and you can see the cut view of squirrel cage induction motor you can see all the parts the frame 
the foot, the lifting eye, the stator core with the three phase winding. You can see the terminal box, you can see the rotor, rotor shaft, rotor core with rotor bars, short circuited with end rings, and you can see also the ball bearings. Now, let us see the cut view of three phase lepering induction motor. It, this is the cut view, you can see the foot, terminal box stator core with windings, the shaft, the rotor core with three phase winding terminated to three slip rings and the brush holding mechanism. You can see also the ball bearings. That's it. Thank you.